Episode 6 of Glitter Stim ASMR, the Star Wars X-Wing Miniatures Game ASMR channel. My name is Andy Myers. In today's episode, we'll take a look at my first edition alt art card collection. So hop on your swoop bike and let's speed down memory lane. I got this X-Wing binder as a prize support from a local store tournament. It's got a nice kind of leather exterior case with a strap and then on the inside it has the uh, multiple pages that have the full size cards and the half size cards that we used to use as upgrade cards in first edition X-Wing. As you can see, it has plenty of pages. All right, so this first altar card, this is a movie still of Luke Skywalker. This uh, Luke Skywalker in first edition had a pilot skill of eight. That's what the orange number is. Um, and it was 28 points without any upgrades, as you can see by the little 28 in the right corner. Uh, Luke's ability, when you defend, you may change one eyeball result to a hit result, uh, no, eight result. And this is the back of the card. This is a rebel pilot, obviously Luke Skywalker. So this was an official LFL card. So these little cards were for upgrade cards, and this upgrade card is the Drunk Assist Astromech, and the text reads, No Shooty Outside Arc. Did move. No overlap. No shot action thing. And then in quotes, I'll try spinning. That's a good trick. And that is the quote of Darth Vader, Lord of the Sith. Uh, this astromech is one point, and this was created by the uh, OCX podcast based out of Orange City, Iowa, run by Aaron Kroll. Uh, I got this and a co another copy of it from Aaron at the 2018 Worlds at FFG Center in Roseville, Minnesota. All right, so this is a copy of Swarm Tactics, which as you can see was from the first quarter of 2017. At the start of the combat phase, you may choose one friendly ship at range one, until the end of the phase, treat that chosen ship as if its pilot skill were equal to your pilot skill. This was an elite pilot talent, and it was worth two points. Uh, this was very good if you had uh, a lot of ships that were lower in pilot skill, but could equip an EBT, and you could chain these. Uh, there's a similar card in 2nd edition. So this next pilot card was the other Luke Skywalker card that I had. And this was also an official uh, FFG altar card. And so... Once again, 28 points, pass skill 8, and uh, you've got 3 attack dice, 2 agility, 3 hull, and 2 shields on the first edition X-Wings, only 3 hull. Uh, you can see at the bottom that it has the, uh, next to the points, it has which icons you can equip, which upgrade cards. So on that one, you could equip an Elite Pilot Talent, a Torpedo, and an Astromech. Alright, so for everybody who uh, played 
first edition, this next card might trigger you a little bit. This is the official Veteran Instincts card. And this says, uh, increase your pilot skill value by two. It's an elite pilot talent, and it only costs one point. The reason that so many people uh, don't want this pilot talent to return uh, is because it really uh, kind of dominated some of the competitive play. There were only a few elite pilot towns you'd take. You'd either take veteran instincts. Uh, so in second edition, that would kind of be like bumping somebody's initiative up to seven. Um, so that was one of them. This is a crew card. This is C3PO. And uh, this one is rubble only. And it says once per round, before you roll one or more defense dice, you may guess aloud a number of evade results. If you roll that many evade results before modifying dice, add one evade result. Uh, this particular altar card is official uh, from Fantasy Flight, and uh, my friend Wade was the one who decided that this would be a great card, and uh, he got in a little bit of trouble for doing so because uh, it meant if you could get this altar card, you didn't really need to buy the uh, CR90 that it came in. <laughs> uh, okay, so this is an epic card. This is supercharged power cell. Uh, it's limited, and when attacking, you may discard this card to roll two additional attack dice. Uh, it allowed you to have three energy on it. The illustration is by Todd Balthazar, a local of the Twin Cities X-Wing. And so this was our summer epic Twin Cities X-Wing League that we had uh, this card made for. The League was really fun. It was basically uh, for two summers in a row, and it was once a month you would play a game of epic. Alright, so this next one is Gunnery Team, which is also for epic. It's also a limited card. And the text reads, Once per round, when attacking with a secondary weapon, you may spend one energy to change one of your blank results to a hit result. So it costs four points, and this was a very effective uh, card. It just turning a blank result to a hit seems pretty good. And that was also from the Epic League. And so this is our third Epic League card, and this is also by uh, Todd Balthazar. This is Hotshot Co-Pilot. When attacking with a primary weapon, the defender must spend one focus token if able. When defending, the attacker must spend one focus token if able. So this was a really great uh, crew card to have. However, it was four points, which in second edition is eight points, so it was always a little spendy. Alright, so this next pilot card is Han Solo. Oh yeah, it's got a holographic uh, coating, so it's very shiny. And so Han Solo was in the Millennium Falcon, and you can see him riding this Tauntaun here from Empire Strikes Back. Han Solo's ability in first edition was when attacking, you may re-roll all of your dice. If you choose to do so, you must re-roll as many of your dice as possible. Uh, very similar to second edition, although it was only for attacking, and in second edition you can re-roll all of your dice on defense as well. And so this was from a uh, group known as the Frozen Wampas, which uh, they don't have a snowball's chance in Mustafar.
points that didn't scale with ship size so it was four points on a small base and four points on a large base uh, which basically meant you could slap this modification on any large base ship that could take mods and you'd be able to boost and it was only four points um, so there was a lot of really excellent uh, ship chassis that you could put this on there is no second edition version of engine upgrade uh, that just allows you to put a boost action on any ship it now changes a red boost to a white boost this uh, upgrade card is fen excuse me this pilot card is fen rao in the sheath of bead so this is the rebel fen rao from uh, rebels and uh, he was a great pilot uh, pilot skill nine two attack dice two green dice four all one shield a huge block of text when an enemy ship inside your firing arc at range one to three becomes the active ship during the combat phase if you are not stressed you may receive one stress token if you do that ship cannot spend tokens to modify its attack dice or defenses um this is a flip card that was designed by josh ackerman and uh so on the back was the scum Fen Rao, and uh, when attacking or defending, if the enemy ship is at range one, you may roll one additional die, very similar to its second edition uh, counterpart. So I have two copies of this next card, which is Recon Specialist. This is an official upgrade card. When you perform a focus action, assign one additional focus token to your ship. In second edition, this is known as Perceptive Co-Pilot. This was a really great crew card. It only costs three points. It's still a great crew card in second edition. Perceptive Co-Pilot on dash is uh, an excellent uh, way to keep your... YT2400 alive. And here we go with an elite pilot talent, Predator. When attacking, you may reroll one attack die. If the defender's pilot skill value is two or lower, you may instead reroll up to two attack dice. So this EBT costs three points. It's pretty good. Um, I actually like the second edition version as well. Uh, but the second edition version, you have to have it in bullseye to get the reroll. Alright, so this next pilot card is Kanan Jarrus in the VCX 100. And it says, when an enemy ship at range 1 to 2 is attacking, you may spend a focus token. If you do, the attacker rolls one fewer attack dice. Uh, Kanan in the Ghost was a great pilot because it really helped to keep the ghost alive you spend that focus token oftentimes you'd equip recon specialist so you get two focus tokens and then be able to take down the damage output of your enemy uh, this is a fan made rebel card Alright, so we've got three copies of this next card, which is uh, very similar to its second edition counterpart. This is Crackshot, everybody's favorite. Uh, when attacking a ship inside your firing arc, at the start of a compare results step, you may discard this card to cancel one of the defender's evade results. Almost identical to its second edition counterpart, but instead of discarding this card, it now says you may spend a charge, and you only have one charge. Uh, it only cost one point. Great card. Alright, and this crew card is Tactician. I've got three copies of it. This was from second quarter 2017. Uh, this was also a very powerful crew card because um, I know it's a little blurry on the camera right now, but I'll read it to you. It says... After you perform an attack against a ship inside your firing arc at range 2, that ship receives one stress token. So, 
you basically you would be handing out stress tokens to enemies and this was really great uh, especially if you could get two attacks so if a pilot's ability allowed them to attack twice or if you remember from that earlier card gunner which uh, when you attack if you miss you can attack again so that was tactician Corin Horn, another rebel pilot in the E-Wing. At the start of the end phase, you may perform one attack. You cannot attack during the next round. Uh, this was an official FFG card. And uh, Corin Horn was very powerful. He had a pilot skill of 8, and you could throw veteran instincts on there to bump his ability up to 10. A lot of people would put um, push the limit, which was an elite pilot talent that uh, allowed you to get a second action in order to, and you'd have to take a stress to do that. It's basically Poe Tamarin's ability. And so this was a great card. Nowadays, you have to have Bullseye uh, in order to use Corrin's ability, and you receive a Weapons Disable token the next round. All right, here is one of my favorite upgrade cards from first edition. This is a Tawny Mind Link, and it's a scum only card. One of the few limited cards for upgrades, and it says, each time you are assigned a focus or a stress token, each other friendly ship with a Tawny Mind Link must also be assigned the same type of token if it does not already have one. Uh, it only cost one point. I love this uh, local art that we had done um, that has the kind of shimmery holographic sparks. This was uh, part of the Late Night X-Wing Summer 2017. Uh, the local Twin Cities X-Wing crew had a number of fan-made altar cards uh, made up. So this is Miranda Donnie. Uh, this was a another one of the uh, TCX late night X-wing crew, and this one uh, was in the K-wing. And it says, once per round, when attacking, you may either spend one shield to roll one additional attack die, or roll one fewer attack die to recover one shield. Uh, this was the summer of 2017 as well. So Miranda Tani was one of those pilots that really uh, dominated the X-Wing meta for a while. Um, there was no limit on to how often you could use her ability, so eventually uh, games would just become kind of stalemates because she would just fly around and not actually try and hit anybody, um, but would just recover all four of her shields. So here is the famous spot class Miranda Donny. It's a plastic card. It's an official uh, FFG card, and it's uh, they didn't make a ton of these, but um, this one is really uh, beautiful in that it has that kind of spot class over the K-wing and the TIE fighter that's being destroyed. There's even a little bit of spot class on the back of the card. So that's Miranda Donny. Sorry to trigger some bad memories for some uh, of you pilots. All right, here we have a, a fan-made holographic Ray pilot with Finn crew combo card. I really like this card uh, because Ray in the uh, Resistance uh, YT-1300 was really powerful when attacking or defending. If the enemy ship is inside your firing arc, you may reroll up to two of your blank results, and then you combine that with Finn as a crew card when attacking with a primary weapon or defending. If the enemy ship is inside your firing arc, you may add one blank result to your roll, very similar to second edition. And this is also from the Frozen Wampas. So here 
is an official FFG Resistance X-Wing file. This is L.O. Asti, and uh, his ability reads, While you are not stressed, you may treat your Talon roll maneuvers as white maneuvers, uh, similar to second edition. Um, and so this particular X-Wing pilot was 30 points, which in uh, second edition would equate to 60 points. So he's kind of expensive, but a really powerful ability. In first edition, you could combine resistance and rebel pilots. It was all one giant faction, similar with First Order and Empire. Here's another uh, resistance X-Wing. This is the Red Ace. Uh, the first time you remove a shield token from your ship each round, assign one evade token to your ship. So nowadays in second edition, this is uh, Joff Sea Striker. Uh, it's a good ability, uh, especially when you could c combine it with a droid that allowed you to recharge shields. Uh, you also see the tech icon there down at the bottom. And so Red Ace was only 29 points. Alright, we're back to Rebels, and this is a movie still Gold Squadron pilot card. Uh, this is a, a generic Y-Wing. As you can see, it has the turret icon, a couple torpedoes, and an astromech slot. The versatile and reliable BTL-A4 Y-Wing was the Rebellion's primary starfighter until the arrival of the T-65 X-Wing. So it had a primary attack value of 2, 1 agility, 5 all, 3 shields, similar to 2nd edition, although in 2nd edition it has uh, 2 shields and 6 all. It only cost 18 points. That was one of the earlier official FFG altar cards. Here's a fan-made card, and this is another local Twin Cities card. This is from the Sector series. Uh, this is Sector 306 Patrol Pilot X-Wing. And so this is uh, some art from an old Star Wars uh, X-Wing TIE Fighter video game. And it's a generic X-Wing Pilot Skill 4. I really like the artwork on this one. Uh, it really reminded me of um, some of the classic X-Wing video games that I used to play that uh, kind of drew me into X-Wing. So yeah, you can see the Twin Cities X-Wing Sector series. I'll have to talk to my uh, buddies in the old guard about getting the Sector series back up and running when we can all get together again. All right, this is a late first edition X-Wing card. As you can see, it's fourth quarter 2018, which is right when we were starting second edition. So this is a Blue Squadron Pilot B-Wing, and uh, it's a generic, cost 22 points. I really like the full art cards that they did. And so if you take a look on the action bar to a focus, target lock, and barrel roll action. So on the back of this card is the second edition B-Wing generic pilot. This is the blue squadron pilot as well. And now you can see the introduction of the linked actions. There's the focus into a linked red barrel roll. So yeah, I really appreciated that they did all dark cards that were both first and second edition towards the end of first edition. Here's one of my favorite cards that I own. This is Asajj Ventress. It's got all the sparkly holographic uh, artwork uh, layover, and the artwork uh, is just beautiful. Um, it's a very dramatic scene from uh, from the Clone Wars 
with Asajj Ventress uh, crouched over Ahsoka Tano. And uh, Asajj Ventress was one of my favorite pilots in first edition. At the start of the combat phase, you may choose a ship at range 1 to 2. If it is inside your mobile firing arc, assign one stress token to it. It was one of the best control cards out there because you would have your forward arc uh, printed and then you'd have your mobile arc which also had a three attack value which they changed for second edition and so you'd just keep that to the side and you would just three hard turn uh, around the fight it was really effective handing out those stress tokens here's a fan made card that I actually designed um, it was my idea and I had Josh Ackerman a good friend of mine uh, do the graphic design this is Torkoal Magic Mux uh, which is a, a fun play on Torkoal Mux as you can see there's Matthew McConaughey over there on the left uh, this is a still from Magic Mike and uh, and those, so that's Torkoal Mux right in center and then on the far side you've got Dengar and uh, I had some success with this I made a top 4 of a regional at FFG back in early 2018 and so I had this uh, pilot in my list and Dankar was a crew member uh, in a, on Asajj Ventress and so I thought it'd be funny to have this card made up so I still have a whole bunch of extras if, uh, if you see me at a tournament come grab one this is a fan made Boba Fett card and Boba Fett when attacking or defending you may reroll one of your dice for each enemy ship at range 1 very similar to second edition ability and uh, in first edition there was no range zero so that's why it's at range one uh, you were range one of ships that were touching you so basically the same he had a pilot skill of eight and so some people would take veteran instincts on him some people would take um, push the limit to get multiple actions so you could theoretically get to focus and evade a lot of people would put engine upgrade on him so you could boost here's another scum altar card this is an official ffg card from first quarter 2017 this is another shadow caster pilot this is ketsu onyo she had a pilot skill of seven at the start of the combat phase you may choose a ship at range one if it is inside your primary and mobile firing arcs, assign one tractor beam token to it. Uh, almost identical to its second edition uh, pilot skill. Uh, and so this had the, uh, the Shadowcaster, the introduction of the rotate action uh, for your turret, for your mobile turret, because all turrets in first edition uh, were 360 turrets. That was something that uh, they did right on the Shadowcaster, was offer that mobile arc. All right, and here's another copy of that uh, Josh Ackerman double-sided. That was for everybody who didn't make it into Worlds 2018. You could participate in a not-Worlds tournament, which was uh, very fun, and he handed that card out. Okay, here's Bosk. This was from uh, a YV666 uh, first edition when you perform an attack that hits before dealing damage you may cancel one of your crit results to add two hit results almost identical to his second edition ability so in uh first edition they had six all and six shields which they i'm glad that they changed in second edition uh, so that you are more susceptible to crits but wow the yv666 I didn't have much success with them in first edition, um, but I do remember my friend Sarah Tessum just absolutely wrecking me with Bosk multiple times. All right, here is the uh, official altar card for Succus. When attacking, you may roll one additional attack die. If you do, then the defender rolls one additional defense die, very similar to second edition ability. Uh, Succus in the G1A pilot skill 7 uh, for all 4 shields very similar chassis um, only 28 points which in 2nd edition points would be 56 I didn't fly out many G1A uh, lists
podcasts in first edition, and I've flown a couple in second edition. They're pretty fun. All right, here is everybody's favorite uh, from second edition scum, Drea Renthal. After you spend a target lock, you may receive one stress token to acquire a target lock. Very different from its second edition ability. Second edition allows your uh, non-limited friendly ships to reroll one attack die if you have that ship in your arc. And so nobody played Drea in first edition, but her ability in second edition is fantastic. Thankfully, they costed her appropriate in second edition. She's kind of expensive. All right, here's a generic. This is the Shadowport Hunter. This was the uh, generic Shadowcaster. As you can see, three attack dice. That's both for the front arc and the mobile turret. Uh, two agility, seven hull, three shields. This was uh, from first quarter 2018. And here we have a generic uh, fire spray. I really like this fire spray with the Arabesh text on it. And this uh, Arabish text reads, Mandalorian Mercenary. Resistance YT-1300, the Arabesh on this YT-1300 uh, reads, Resistance Sympathizer.
Alright, here we have Backstabber. This is an official FFG altar card for a generic TIE fighter. When attacking from outside the defender's firing arc, roll one additional attack die. Very similar to its second edition ability. TIE Fighter in first edition. Even though this was a named TIE Fighter, it didn't have an elite pilot talent. So a card like Swarm Tactics, you'd have to put on some really high pilot skilled uh, TIE Fighters, but you could get uh, a nice Swarm going. Alright, so this is the infamous Omicron Group pilot uh, in the Lambda Shuttle. And you would take one of these and the upgrade card, the crew card, Emperor Palpatine. And uh, then you would have two aces. And it's still a really good um, archetype. And now we've got some full-size upgrade cards. This is the first edition shield upgrade, which was a modification. Increase your shield value by one. And this was from fourth quarter 2018, which means that it was not only a first edition card, but uh, as you'll see in a moment on the back, is a second edition card. Um, this kind of like engine upgrade, you could put onto any size ship. And so for four points, you know, it wasn't a great value um, on some ships, but uh, like large base, but on small base, you usually would have some more agility. So it was, it was actually worth it. Nowadays in second edition, it scales by agility. And here's a really awesome uh, first edition altar card. This is a combo card, one of the only combo cards that FFG officially did. It has uh, R2-D2 combined with integrated astromech uh, R2-D2 after executing a green maneuver, which in second edition is blue. You may recover one shield up to your shield value, so you wouldn't have to take a weapons disabled token or anything. You just get the shield back. It was great. Uh, so this was from the 40th anniversary of Star Wars um, back in 2017. And uh, so the back of this card is the original uh, art for the movie poster. Uh, really beautiful card. And this was actually the first tournament I ever won at FFG. We did a 40th anniversary uh, tournament where you could only bring ships from the uh, original uh, a New Hope, and uh, there was maybe 40 or so players there, and that's the first time I ever won a tournament. Uh, this is a another first edition altar card um, from 2018. This is Juke. Uh, when attacking, if you have an evade token, you may change one of the defender's evade results to an eyeball result. And so, in second edition, They've changed the wording a little bit, as you can see here. This is another combo altar card, and now it's only for small or medium ships. And it says, while you perform an attack, if you are evading, so instead of if you have an evade token, it says if you are evading, you may change one of the defender's eyeball results uh, to a focus result. Excellent upgrade card, but it's pretty spendy. And that's all of my first edition all dark cards. It was the best of times. It was the blurst of times. Which was your favorite card? Leave your answer in the comments below and send me a photo of any all dark cards you have from your local X-Wing community. As always, thank you so much for watching and listening. If you want to support this absurdist creative endeavor, like and subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell notification,
notification so you get a friendly reminder next Friday when the new video comes out. Then head over to patreon.com slash ASMR and become a patron at any level to access exclusive videos. And if you can't afford the Imperial credits right now, a friendly recommendation to your local X-Wing community is always appreciated. May the Force be with you. Pew.